Hey my good friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. Today we're looking at the 2017 Volkswagen Atlas, an all new vehicle for Volkswagen built here in the United States and an all new entry in the full size crossover SUV market. And it's a hot place to be. You've got the Ford Explorer, Toyota Highlander, Honda Pilot, Chevrolet Traverse, just to name a few. Nissan Pathfinder, another. This is a vehicle that's gonna be competing against the best of the best, one of the hottest selling markets there is. So. Really what we need to talk about is what's it like to drive, what's it like to be in, what's it like to live with? As we get ready to go out for a test drive, I want to talk about styling just a little bit because when pictures first came out of this vehicle, it was very polarizing. A lot of people sort of thought the styling was a little bit plain, a little bit avant-garde in some ways, but plain wrapper in others. But they've actually done something a little bit different here, I think, especially in this face, in this grille design. It's a little bit more rugged, a little bit more square, not exactly like all their other cars. And this grille here has a lot of intricate detail. It really sort of goes beyond what they have been doing in the past. These headlights on this one these are standard LED headlights and that's across the model line not just on the upper trim levels and they actually look quite good when they light up they have a lot of artistic flair going on and uh, they really do a pretty good job at night now we haven't seen the ratings yet by the IIHS when it comes to those headlights but I do think that they're going to perform pretty well in tests now this is a fully loaded model here so I do have fog lights down there in the lower fascia and as you can see here this lower fascia does have a little bit of design articulation going on here yet they've kept it pretty high so that it would have uh, a pretty good approach angle when it comes to going off-road over here on the corner you can see we've got 20 inch wheels on this one a fully loaded SEL now even down on the base models it comes standard with an 18 inch alloy wheel so it does have a pretty good starting point the 20 inch here being the top end as we come down the side here you can see how large this thing is 198 inches in length makes it one of the longest vehicles in the class and one of the longest and largest vehicles Volkswagen's ever sold here in the United States. Now one thing I will point out as you come down the side is it's a very square boxy shape. I happen to like that. Some of the vehicles in this class they've got a lot of weird little angles and curves and bulges that they've really just put there for the sake of putting them there and they look a little bit off-putting in some ways. Here you've got a nice Germanic shape that's plain wrapper and down to business. The one thing that sort of jumps out are these fender flares. I'll admit when I first saw this vehicle in photographs those fender flares really didn't do a lot for me but now that I see them in three dimensions it all works pretty good especially from this angle here. Now out here at the back you've got LED taillights power opening deck lid here on this one that is on the top two trim grades and right here across the chrome on the back you've got the atlas spread out in big block lettering sort of the latest design fad these days down on the lower fascia you'll note that there's a standard trailer hitch receiver down there a very nice thing but i do have to sort of pick on volkswagen a little bit about something if you look at these exhaust tips down here very handsome looking dual exhaust tips there in the bumper very well designed but if you look under the bumper you'll find that they're nothing but ornaments. The exhaust pipes actually dump out below the bumper. They're not even connected to them. They don't even blow air through them. They're just completely ornamental. They didn't even try to make them real. Um, they're handsome, but they're fake. The interior of the Atlas is a pretty nice place. I've been pretty happy sitting here this week driving this around town and out on the highway. And it's because this looks very much like an American car from the 70s or 80s. Now that could be taken a bad way, but when I say that, what I mean is, is you've got a very square and linear look here in the design. The difference being here, it's a very high quality. It's not cheap and chintzy like American cars were in the 70s and 80s, but sitting here and looking out the windshield, the feel and the overall shape of this interior very much the same. You've got a long square hood out in front of you and you're sitting down in this SUV, not up on top of it, so it's definitely more car-like than truck-like. The big thing here is the materials. For the most part, materials in here are of a very high quality. You've got soft touch up here on the dash, here on the top of the door panel, this nice big console lid, very soft, high quality materials. There are some cheaper materials here and there, down here on the door, console. Controls here are typically Volkswagen on the center stack. You've got climate control and all the buttons for your seating and your HVAC control, as well as heated steering wheel, 
heated and cooled seats and these seats whoo they are very comfortable leather seats power i do have memory here on the driver's side and these chairs are very comfortable just like almost every other volkswagen on the planet one thing the company does very well is chairs and driving position they do very well too it's very easy there's a lot of adjustment range here for both short and taller drivers i'm about five nine finding my sweet spot here was easier than pie and once i'm here Nice leather wrapped steering wheel with all the controls on it. This is your typical Volkswagen steering wheel with your audio controls as well as controls for your instrument cluster. And the instrument cluster in this particular one is a full TFT display. So it's a virtual cockpit. It's got dials and a center screen that are all completely customizable. And I've liked to put the nav map there in the middle of it, but you don't have to do that. You can keep the map over here on the main center screen and put other things there. I just like to have it right there in front of me rather than have to look over here. And I always like to have my radio controls over there, but we'll get to that when we start talking about uh, the infotainment system. Right below those HVAC controls, you've got a huge storage bin down here that's large enough for the biggest phone you can think of, two or three of them in fact. All the ports you can need are down there, USB auxiliary and a 12 volt port. Back here, a huge storage area, big enough you can actually put a water bottle standing up in there, or about eight of them I'd say. And in between you've got large cup holders which are off to the side so they're not in the way of the shifter or any of the controls here. You've got a mode selector for your driving modes right here, an electric parking brake, and Volkswagen likes to put their engine start right there on the console very well laid out it makes sense when you're driving around in it from day to day and i like the fact that the phone bin is not only large but it's easy to get your phone in and out of you don't have to fight around a shifter or other things like that very well laid out when you're sitting back here in the second row or the third row the size of the atlas really becomes an asset and you can see that right here this seat isn't all the way back nor is it all the way forward and I've got plenty of space right here. These seats about halfway forward, halfway back so we've got about a medium setting in both cases. I have got lots of space here, plenty of leg room, plenty of headroom even though this does have a large panoramic roof which opens the space up quite nicely. It doesn't take so much headroom where I feel snug back here and on top of that you've got a very nice seating position in terms of height here so it feels natural. Knees aren't perched up, you're not sitting down too low and these seats are infinitely adjustable. You've got a slide adjustment, you have a rake adjustment, and you can also easily move these forward to get to that third row back there. And the third row, look at that. That's actually large enough, it's high enough off the floor for adults to sit back there quite comfortably. When these seats start folding down, that third row goes down in a 50-50 split, the second row goes down in a 60-40 split. And when they're all down, as you can see, you've got a nearly flat load floor, one of the flattest in the business, and you've got 96.8 cubic feet of cargo space back here once all these seats are folded. That is one of the highest cargo figures in the class, again, owing it to the size of this vehicle. Underneath that rear floor back there, even with the high-end audio system we've got here and the 20-inch wheels, this still has a spare tire back here. You can't actually see it as we look back there, but what we've got is we've got a sound deadening pad that's laying over the top of that tire. Trust me, it's there. I always look to make sure on an SUV. There's a lot of amenities back here for your rear seat passenger, starting with the HVAC vents. Not only here on this console for the second row, the pillars back there actually have vents for the third row. So that's a good thing to keep everybody comfortable. And on the SEL here, I've got HVAC controls back here on the center console. There's also heated seats back here. And if you look down there low on the console, you'll also see two USB charging ports in addition to a 115 volt outlet. So anyone sitting back here is going to have a myriad of ways to not only charge their devices, but use devices like a laptop. And you've also got shades back here for these rear seats. A very nice feature. When it comes to scoring this interior, I'm very pleased overall with the design. Even though I called it American, I meant that in a good way because this is quintessentially every bit as good as the American Clipper sedan or station wagon used to be back when they should have been better than they were. So I don't know if that makes any sense, but uh, it's very well done in here with quality materials with exception of one or two pieces. But this interior it's five out of five stars. When it comes to the infotainment system, Volkswagen has really taken the ball and run with it as far as creating the system that I really think is something that you can, you can really look to as perfection. And look, 
I have complained about other brands' infotainment systems ad nauseum, particularly Mazda, uh, Toyota, some of those other brands, Nissan, they don't quite get to where we are here. We've got a large touchscreen that not only looks good, it's got clear, crisp graphics, it has reaction to just your hand in proximity where it'll go dim, but the minute you put your hand close to it, it lights up and it comes awake. These menus are very easy to understand. You've got swipe and slide controls. And the best part about it is you have a volume knob and a tuning knob because at the end of the day, those two things are far easier, quicker, more intuitive to use than buttons on the steering wheel or any kind of graphic sliders. That's just a fact of life. Some automotive companies out there just haven't gotten that yet. So there's a lot of feature content here. You've got Apple CarPlay, you've got Android Auto functionality, you have a lot of other connected services in addition to the fact that the nav system here works exceptionally well. Not only do you have graphics here, you can move that map over there, but it's very intuitive to use and it's very well updated with the latest information add it to the fact that on this top level model we have a 480 watt Fender audio system all in. This is a system other manufacturers really should look to to make their systems better and uh, it sounds like I'm gushing but that's just a fact. This system gets five stars. Under the hood of the Atlas is a very unique engine to Volkswagen. It's the VR6. Here it has 3.6 liters 276 horsepower and 266 pound-feet of torque. And I say unique because it's an engine Volkswagen's had for quite some time. In fact, I had a 2000 Volkswagen Jetta with a smaller version of this engine in it. And basically, it's a very narrow angle V6. Very narrow such that the packaging, when you look at it here in the engine compartment, it looks just like an inline engine, but it's it's not quite as long as it would be. Those the cylinders are just really sort of sandwiched in there very tightly. And it actually has one head instead of two, like a traditional V engine. Here it's mated to an eight-speed automatic transmission, and we have the four-motion all-wheel drive. As such, it's rated by the EPA at 17 MPG city, 23 MPG highway, and 19 MPG combined. So how does it go? And 60. Well, the first thing I'd say is that even though this is a 3.6 liter engine, very comparable with most in class in terms of size, this engine really does feel like it's working a lot harder than some of them, and that's because it doesn't quite have the same horsepower. Toyota, Ford, most of these other brands do offer quite a bit more horsepower in their V6 offerings. And this 8-speed automatic transmission, while it's a great thing to have all these gears, tends to not really have a good hookup off the line. Its shifts around town are pretty decent and refined, but when you really put power to it, there's a bit of a lag and a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a hesitation, not only with the transmission's handling of that power, uh, but this engine really getting off the ground and flying. So power and refinement with this powertrain could be a little bit better, and that's just sort of a characteristic that the VR6 engine has always had. It's not the smoothest six cylinder out there. Now, with the all-wheel drive here, it defaults to front-wheel drive most of the time to save fuel, only goes to all-wheel drive if the computer determines you need it. But fuel economy this week, even so, I still only managed to average about 15 mpg combined city and highway. So powertrain gets four out of five stars. You know, when Volkswagen first showed this to the automotive press last year, they really painted this thing up in the imagery of the Volkswagen microbus out on the open road on Route 66, out here on the desert, enjoying America. And, well, I'll tell you, this is a lot different than a microbus. First of all, you can throw it into a curve at 65 miles an hour. It's quiet, it's solid, it handles well. And, you know, this is a vehicle that you very well could take across the United States very comfortably because you can drive it all day and not get tired of sitting behind the wheel. And that really is the great thing about this compared to some in class is this has German sedan handling. It has German sedan feel and character. The steering is light. It's crisp. It's everything that you'd expect in a Passat or maybe even a Jetta when it comes to the driving experience, but it's a full-size SUV. And that's quite different from most of the vehicles in its class and, of course, from that microbus. But the other big difference this has from the microbus is that you can also take it off the pavement. 
getting off the pavement, one of the first places I love to take these vehicles is the Desert Washboard Road. And that's because even though this isn't hardcore off-roading, this washboard surface can really tell us how well put together this is and how well tuned the chassis is. Does it isolate the interior and the occupants from that rough surface out there? Does it isolate us from the resonance of that washboard surface? And most importantly, does the suspension and chassis stay together solid? Do I get any rattling or vibration through the steering or the suspension? Because that actually does happen a lot, even on some of the best off-road vehicles out there. And so what I'm finding here is that this is a vehicle that's tuned for pavement driving. And that's to say that you get a nice sharp driving experience on the highway like we were just talking about a moment ago. But when you get out here on the rougher surfaces, it does tend to be quite a bit harsher. And on this particular model that has in part to do with its larger 20 inch wheels and lower profile tires, there's less sidewall on those tires to absorb some of the harshness. And the other thing I'm getting is a little bit of rattling and resonance here in this overall structure and interior trims. So this is a vehicle that does very well on the highway, but if you bring it out here to the rough, you start to feel a little bit more. So chassis gets four out of five stars. On the measure of quality, I spend a lot of time on these cars looking at panel gaps, body panel fit and alignment, the paint finish, materials, how the interior fits together, things like that, listening for rattles. And this is a vehicle that I'm very impressed with, not only in how well it's presented, how well it's put together, this paint finish is mirror smooth, but it's very tight going down the road. I will say that we talked about the interior, a couple of plastics here and there are a little bit on the cheaper side, but that's been sort of a Volkswagen thread lately. Uh, but outside of that, we're very well put together here and the warranty on this, one of the better in class, especially when you have the perforation and rust through Volkswagen's very, very good on that. So quality comes in at five out of five stars. All right, my friends, wrapping it up for the Atlas. I like it, I really do like it a lot. So much, in fact, it goes on my I Buy It list for 2017, the highest honor here at Test Driven TV. And basically what that means is, I buy it with my own money. Now, I will tell you that I'm a Volkswagen owner already. I've owned a lot of them, so I do like the brand. Very hard for me to find a Volkswagen I don't like well enough to buy, although there have been some. But this is a very good vehicle, even sort of stepping back and putting a, a little bit more, uh, less biased eye on it. And that's because of the design, the driving character. It's the only vehicle in class that offers that German driving experience. It definitely has that. Now granted, not as much horsepower as some in class, but when it comes to features for the money, when it comes to overall character and uh, the design, I really think they've done a good job here that makes it a standout in the class. So value, I put at five stars. When you put that in with everything we've already talked about, we're at four and a half stars for the review. Very good. I'm Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I hope you enjoyed the ride. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video because I actually had a very good time putting this together. This is a vehicle I was really looking forward to test driving for some time. And as you could tell, I liked it, even though it does have some imperfections. If I were looking for a vehicle in this class, I'd definitely buy it. There's that. I render my opinion sometimes. That said, I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel because we do test drive one or two vehicles a week and you can do that by clicking right there on the big round logo or you can just simply see our latest test drive by clicking right there. Either way, stay tuned.